Well, at least I didn't fall off a horse like that imbecile I was. You know what I mean, you Robin? Know what? I'm reading about him. You know, he said his heart stopped twice. I know. He, he laid on the barn floor or something for like six hours before anybody found him. I was in Los Angeles, <laughs> and uh, Larry King, Larry King, like loves Imus. Yeah. You know, he, Larry King still thinks Imus is happening. Well, for, in in Larry King world, he's relevant. Yeah. So so Imus was on there talking about you know all serious now yeah, about yeah. his health. And, right. I fell off the horse. And he took about his heart stop for two uh, two times. I was like, I was like, come on. Who started that again? Yeah, what doctor looked at that and said we need to save it? Yeah, they flew me uh, in a helicopter, a chopper to uh, Saint Vincent's and uh, wherever. I think it's so funny that he was lying there for six hours. Lying there dead. <laughs> I like that we revived the dead man. Why am I? I like that. I think that is the most hysterical thing I've heard. It was smarter to save Christopher Reeve. And Larry was like, did you think Christopher Reeve? And I was like, whoa, whoa, I was dead. How did I think? I couldn't th think. You stupid F. How could I word with? But it wasn't even funny. Like, he was all serious about his near-death experience. Right, I only find it funny. Yeah. You need it funny. I know. We're making it funny. <laughs> I, you know what? I ought to get that whole interview and just play it. It was a riot. You would have a pisser it analyzing was a, that. It was the funniest thing you've ever done. I have so much to talk about. Oh. And uh, I don't even know where to begin. I went to see the... What, you know, mm, should yeah. I take a break? Let me take a break. We'll get everything started. I'll give you... B -b -b -b, the right. rundown. I'll give you the b -b -b right after <laughs> this. Okay? Can I get the big black and design mistake? Sure. <laughs> okay, I probably should take a break first, but I should. Big Black. Going. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He can wait through the commercial. Yo, yo. You effing Jew bastard. You gonna make me wait? <laughs> you, you, you working yet? Who are you, Hillary Clinton? <laughs> yeah. You working yet, dude? Not yet, no. Mm. Any uh, any leads? Oh. Well, I thought you had a lead for you, my buddy, uh, Bob Bowie. You mean that interview you had seven weeks ago? You're just banking on that? <laughs> well, yeah. You Don't that. you think they fill that position? Yeah, no, I, but you told me I got a future at this company, man. I told you I'd try to help you out, but I was hoping you'd look on your own. <laughs> oh. You, you, you're down to nothing, aren't you? Did you ever get your 10000 Yeah, I finally got it. Good. Wow. Like, ran it last, bro. Mm. So that, his tough. head is back above water. Yeah. yeah. A lot, man. Now, you Are you in the Extreme Fan Tournament of Champions? I, I, I get them posted. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, he is. What's the going to be? You can win, it's going to be 25 grand. You can win 25 Gs. Yo, yo, yo. Whoa, that's going to really help. I want to work for another You know, from now on, he's just going to contest here for his living. Yeah, well, let him contest. <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks a lot. Trying to help you out. Help the brother out, bro. You didn't win, so don't What do you got him. tape of exactly? Uh, I got, um, I got Imus talking about how he almost died. Yeah, that's funny. I saw, I saw it twice. I was in Los Angeles. I saw Larry King and Imus talking about, you know, in depth. About how Imus almost died. Yeah, the blow by blow. And Larry was making it seem like we almost lost a national treasure. You know, this curmudgeon that uh, everyone loves. And then uh, they they repeated it several times, and I caught each one of the repeats and had a good laugh each You're time. You're lucky because that was so funny. I, it's a two minute clip, but it's so riveting. I couldn't cut it anywhere. You shouldn't cut. You should play the whole hour. <laughs> well, I got like five or six clips. I got one we talked about you and you know someone talked about the kids. And that one was kind of boring. The kids. Yeah, Everybody talks about the kids on the cancer oh, ranch. The cancer oh, yeah. kids. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we can only. He's all serious about his, you know, his ranch, which is just, you know. You know, there's a guy who sees the end near. He's trying to buy his yeah. way into heaven. Yeah, he, this is a guy who. All the crap. This guy who mistreated his own children so poorly. Yeah. Well, he now he wants all... to be nice to cancer kids. Yeah, now he's going to help some cancer kids, hoping God's going to smile on him. It's too late to help his own kids, so he's got to get some new ones. Yeah, he's getting some cancer kids, helping some strangers out. Uh -huh. Can't help the can't help the three daughters he had. But really, what he does is he broadcasts a show from there, too. And you know what else is cool? They were showing pictures of him and his wife on the ranch. He married the hot young wife. Yeah. After the baby, the wife, and the wife's aging pretty rapidly. So. Well, I think Imus dreams you. Yeah, Imus drained everything out He's of her. He's drinking her blood. I'm yeah, I'm, t I'm telling you. Well, it ain't helping. She's almost gone. Because he looks like her, her, her grandmother. That's right. He's, yeah, he's yeah. gotten very feminine. He's become so feminine. And drinking that young female blood. Has been... To hide his big wobbly neck, he's got this big scarf on his neck now. So he looks like, he looks like Liberace. He's I almost an Arab woman. Yeah. He's he, yeah, they should send him over to Sesame Place and stick him down his slide I, in the tube. I thought the scarf was to draw attention away from the yeah. piece of red brillo on his head. Well, uh, not only does he have red brillo hair now, but he, and then on the Larry King show, he's wearing that big oxygen thing that goes through your nose. Really? Yeah. yeah. Is that what is it called? Yeah, a cannula. A cannula. He was wearing one of those. Yeah. I thought he grew a Salvador Dali mustache. <laughs> a tube mustache. <laughs> 
if you watch Honest in the Morning, you can see him I'm wearing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. that is funny. But now he's got to do oxygen on the show. Yeah. Sometimes he tried not to wear it. That he, he needed air that he had to put it on real quick. <laughs> That's what, you know what that is? Watching him do that. He looked like, like a seventh grade science oh, project. So funny. Watching <laughs> Imus with his nose thing on is like trying to watch a Kirk Douglas movie. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just disturbing. He's yeah, not I'm funny. Lucy fall <laughs> after she's nine. He's talking now. He's thinking about what a good Samaritan he is. You know, it's like you know, here you go. We, uh, Larry, we, and he was all serious. Yeah. You know, Larry, we, uh, we help the kids, and, and let me tell you something. Even though these kids are dying of cancer, let me tell you something. We don't baby them here. People yeah. aren't buying it. Yeah, 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 he makes we, them work. Yeah, he makes them work. He goes, we treat them as real farmhands, and, and, and even if they're, you know, he goes, he's all proud of I mean, Some of these kids are weak in a medical condition. They're doing, I'm as his gardening. Yeah. I know. And he's, he's even they have to do, like, cleaning horse crap. And, 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 it makes them feel like they're worth walkers. They can do anything. No, they can't. They're sick, idiot. <laughs> they can't do anything. Why don't you do anything? Why don't you breathe on your own without those tubes? Right. Get rid of your tubes and go out there. healthy. Picked up on that too. I thought that was so funny. Let's yeah. not baby Imus. Do that show off oxygen. All right, you got to play. All right, let me go. Let <laughs> Imus go <laughs> chop wood. And, and, and then Larry goes, go shoot some horses. He goes, I, I broke 16 of my ribs. I broke. I, you know, he's like, he broke he's, everything. My, my left side is paralyzed. He is so brittle. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you bring up a good point because yeah. I, I've, I've always heard you discuss this. Like, I'm reading this book about JFK Jr., mm -hmm. and it's talking about all the charity work he did that nobody's aware of. Right. Yeah. You know? And yeah, well, always, of course, because he was super rich and had nothing better to do. But you're always saying, like, Imus always has to, like, name hospital wings after himself. It's a yeah. big oh, 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 yeah. Imus oh, yeah. Is constantly telling you what he's doing. And he's not donating his own money. That's the scam on all this. Yeah. He gets his oh, listeners to raise the money. Those and people are too. buying into this. There were news articles <laughs> about the most disappointed person was going to be Imus, that he couldn't meet. Meet the kids like Imus doesn't scare kids. Yeah, like like <laughs> gee, and then they showed the kids standing next to Imus in his hospital room with uh -huh. the tubes coming out of him, and the kids look all petrified of him. Yeah, and they just looked upset and sat. And he goes, you know, we don't have any like counselors. It's not a camp. These kids come here and work, and these kids look like they were like like you know what it was like Kathy Lee slave labor. Yeah, but, but Howard, that's a, that's when the point. When is he gonna be found out? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, what what's fun for a kid in a camp where you have to just sit there and work all the time? But Howard, that's the play, point. Play, you idiot. And these kids are real farm hands, and then they go home to die. But if you, oh. but if you, yeah, if you, I, yeah, gee, I scrape poop off Imus. Yeah, why don't they clean up? Why they clean up and Imus? And I died. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there going, what a scam this is, and how sad these kids look and depressed. And you know what? For all the money, he's, uh, you know, he's sort of pumping into this thing. Mm -hmm. The place looks like it's all run down. That's what I figured. It would be, he'd probably be a, a wreck. Dude, let these kids go to Disney World. They're going to die. But if he's going to meet with these kids, why does it have to be taped? Yeah, well, you know because why. Because. Why can't he just meet he's with them? He's going to show that to St. Pete. Yeah, because you're gonna, he's showing everyone what a great man he is. You're going to put the videotape in the casket? Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Jeez. Hey, hey, Gary. Yes, sir. You about to say something about some hot chick at the at the place, the, the Zwicky buzzer. Zwicky sure. buzzer. No, there was a black woman that worked there that was really hot, Howard. Mm. And the whole joke of the whole, the, the whole, well, not a joke, but these guys pretended that she didn't know what it meant. Mm. And she'd be back there all the time. She'd get so pissed off. She'd hear the buzzer, and she would mumble under her breath. <laughs> he was a good-looking guy. You got that Imus tape? Yeah. Yeah. Right now, right here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Why is Ralph in the studio, man? Yeah, why are you, where, where are you going to get the... Ralph's got some good tapes today. I, I, I'm waiting on Scott. Go in, the, go in the engineering room, bro. Oh, shut up. Go in your bathroom. <laughs> what, are you stalling because you don't have the tapes? I, I seem to have misplaced. Where are the Imus tapes? All right, let me play this one right now. I have to check my archive. <laughs> What's the posh? Well, the first time they revived me in a helicopter, and I don't remember any of that flight, and... From, uh, from Las Vegas to Mexico to Albuquerque, it must be about 150 miles, something like that. And then my wife screaming her head off in the hospital is really, I mean, screaming I'm, like what? You don't know, save him. Well, screaming yeah. at the doctors. I, 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 had, I had stopped breathing, and they had given me so much, so many drugs and stuff. And I was in the room by my, I guess there was a nurse or two in there, but I had stopped breathing, and she was, she was trying to tell the doctors that I had stopped breathing, and they said, no, he's just relaxed. And she said, no, no, I'm telling you. I, she stopped breathing. He she, she's smarter blue. than the doctors. Right, the doctors can't tell. Get out of here if you don't, you know. So, so when I mean, so when I credit her with saving my life, I know it sounds lame, but I mean, man, that's what happened. Even so, if she had not raised hell, why? But she saved his uh, life. Why would be? His so. wife has to save. Oh, what was he? he, he somebody have it. He is so pussy with no, wait, 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 wait. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. Because she told him this story. He doesn't have any memory of it. Right. She has told him I saved your life. I'm so, so please, when you die, leave me all your money. I've, 
Lay. He is so out of it. I know. He doesn't even realize when the wool is being and my, and my wife saved my life. Or, 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 or I stopped breathing. The doctor said I was just relaxed. The, the doctor, the, the guys, the doctor's an idiot. The what, you know, <laughs> Deidre Imus is now an MD. Or else she's so used to checking him to see whether he's breathing or not. <laughs> she, she's like, yeah, I, uh, this is our attempt to get him to rip up the prenup. Yeah. I, honey, I love you. I saved you. We have a child together. Can't we rip up that prenup now? <laughs> then you can die. Yeah, she's better than all the doctors in the whole hospital, right? Mm. I just like that she's losing her looks because I just married the young Chippy. And then they show pictures of her on the ranch. She looks like he's sucking the life out of her. But listen to him. I mean, he even sounds old at this point. Yeah. Codger, we're listening. And you had to see him. He had a, a nose tube in. <laughs> well, he's doing like, he the decency to take that out for the interview. He can't. He can't breathe. He can't breathe. Oh, you should put, put MSNBC on right now. You see him. And then those two on. Oh. The big wires hanging out of his nose. So funny. He looks like John Travolta in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Scientology movie? Battleship Earth or whatever it was called. Yeah, go ahead. Play some more. I wouldn't be here, so. Oh, what was the well, Somebody have Did you have any strange uh, feelings? Did you like, uh, you know, any of the, not, I don't mean out of body experiences, but what, what does someone go through when they face this kind? What did you go through facing this? Well, that Sunday night, uh, that was the, well, which the, the, the first night that I was in the hospital after they flew me from Las Vegas um, to Mexico, I all I remember from that night is 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 just seeing nothing but uh, just this. I, you know, I I don't know whether it's because I've heard what people what Can happens you talk? to people, but all I remember is seeing this enormously bright light, ah. and then oh. I and the sensation of drowning and not being able to. And, and screaming and clawing at the right screaming, light. Which is what my wife said I was doing. Right. And, and then I... I uh, the wife couldn't wait to get rid I, of him. I, 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 I kept seeing this image of... I, guess I, thought, I thought it was my brother. Uh, <laughs> that brother. Who, who looked a lot t-shirts. like Jesus, Larry. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, you know, I don't, other than that... I'm trying I, to be I, funny. But I, it, was, it, it was the sensation of everything being white. White. And of, and of not God. being able to, and of drowning, right. not being able to breathe. White. Yeah, there were no black people, <laughs> which a true racist like him That's would right. be happy about. <laughs> Heaven is all white. I used Larry. to scream. I used to scream at uh, some of the black secretaries and call them niggered in the halls. Right. Uh, I'm sure he was very happy to see that all things were white up in heaven. <laughs> yeah, Larry, I saw a big white light. <laughs> <laughs> it was all white. I can't wait. To yeah. Die. A dickhead. I'm watching this in my hotel room in Los Angeles going, I got to get back on the air. I was ready to return that day. That was great. And we haven't talked about you? That was boring, actually. Oh, I thought you were... Yeah, go... If you want to play that, go ahead. Maybe people like that. It's boring. Did you mean it when you you said that uh, you you praised Howard Stern who wanted to wish you had died because he was at least he was being consistent? Yeah, I mean, the guy's not some phony. I mean, he's not hes not writing. I mean, I'm not getting a get well card from Howard Stern. I mean, we don't like each other, and we should, should stay that way. And, they, oh, yeah, I have great respect for him. He, he wants me dead. He should say that. He did say that, and I i have great admiration for that. Of course, I thought it was kind of he a admires that. I mean, uh, you know, I thought it was funny. I mean, some, some friends of mine said, oh, God, that's awful. I said, no, it's not awful. It's funny. I mean, you get over it. There you go. I miss owes his whole career to me. In a way, I reinvented him. Gave him his whole little talk show. Gave him the idea to put a show on TV. I mean, God, the guy the guy adores me, actually. If you want to know the truth, I mean, when I worked at NBC, Absolutely. S. Get Robin, rid of him. we couldn't get rid of him. The guy would follow me around like a lost puppy and, like, this ask me how I wrote, guy, how I created my show. Sammy, what are you up to? This guy yeah. worked from 5.30 to 10 in the morning, okay? I barely ever got when there. you arrived at work, he was waiting for you. Yeah. He'd sit in on the writing sessions, yeah, and then he'd do most of the show with us right. to watch us work. Yeah, I mean, the guy just went to school, learned how to do a radio show. Before that, he was doing quack quack bits and right, the the Donkey Kong. Yeah, Donkey Kong and playing twelve records an hour. How long were you at the station before he started doing that? Well, at first he was trying to get rid of me, like in an underhanded way, by making me uncomfortable. Yeah, he was all jealous. Yeah, and then he figured it out. Yeah. I mean, see, how long did it take him to figure out that, you know, you were having it? Um, a year? Like a year. Yeah? 
And then, and then, like, all of a sudden, it was like, it wouldn't leave me alone. He was your best friend. Yeah. Remember when we were on 3 to 7, and he used to come in at, what, 4.30, 5.30 in the morning to do a show? Yeah. And sometimes he would call our show at 6.45, and he'd, be, he'd still be in his office. I know. And we would always say, doesn't that guy have anywhere to go? He'd be in his office. He was day. so freaked out that I was onto something. That yeah. He, we would throw him out. Yeah. It was weird. He, he, said, he really, and what was weird is that the newspapers have never even picked up on that. Right. And he they, really did latch onto the show. Yeah. I mean, he really did. He dug... Hanging around and being part of it, I think he thought it was good for his I show. Forgot, he then, you know, we we created these things for Al Rosenberg because he threw Al Rosenberg off to give his girlfriend a job. It would make me crazy. And uh, so we started using Al Rosenberg. And he got mad. Would take Al Rosenberg and put him on his show and do the same character. <laughs> yeah. Then we had a complaint about that. Well, he renamed the character. No, oh, that's didn't. right. Sometimes he gave him a different voice. No, so Sue Simmons was Sue Simmons. Right. How then he then he would then he would try to take me out to lunch and he'd start waving around all kinds of like. He had an accountant that would send over cash, and he had thousands of dollars in cash. He used like, to carry a roll of and dollars. It, and it drove me crazy. I was like, that should be my money. Like, well, why is he getting paid? I know the thing that he, that he did that really pissed you off. Yeah. He was up for contract negotiation, and this had nothing to do really with the contract. The station gave him a Rolex. And he was like, I want this Rolex. I sold this Rolex. It's $12,000. And the station really cares about me, and they want me. And they got it for him. And, oh, they, yeah. and then they got it for him. And, and I was so honorable. I was like, well, wait. Why do they have to buy him a Rolex? I mean, but I, that, had, that had yeah, nothing to do. With, I know. Gifts, nothing. But that had nothing to do with and the contract and itself. He got a full contract yeah. of money. a dick. I wish he had died. Plus, he had that, that you know, what you really used to irk me was that guy who was always hanging around because he had to drive Imus everywhere. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. While we were on the subway, Dick, guy had no talent. Yeah, I know. I used to see the four, you, Fred, and Robin would get out of the car like clowns. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, Clown car. Was a good day. When we were on the subway, we were shaking in our boots. Yeah. Fred had a big briefcase that he would hit people with. <laughs> no, but uh, no, and they bothered us. I tell people about this now, and they think this is funny. Howard lived on Long Island. Robin lived in Queens. Fred lived in Queens. Robin and Fred would drive all the way to Long Island to get in the car to come to New York That's with right. you. We needed to. We needed to be together. We were scared. Every day, Fred, would, Fred's car, the car that you guys were in, would drive past Fred's house another half hour to get to your house. I know. We, believe me, we didn't care. It was it better was, it that was we were together. Safety in, the, <laughs> in numbers. Safety numbers. We had to take on the New York subway. <laughs> then we try, Then we decided the subway was too dangerous. I would drive my car. And I had a 70 Valiant that would break down in the middle of Harlem because yeah. we'd get lost. <laughs> Why would yeah. you be in Harlem to get the Because it was so bad, the traffic. The traffic was so horrible, you couldn't stay on That's the trade-off. So the only thing you do is you ride through Harlem because nobody rides yeah. through Harlem. And then we get lost, we wind up in the Bronx. Mm. I mean, it was horrible. <laughs> now, what else you got? Get any more Imus tape or is that it? Yeah, I got a few more clips. Right, go ahead. Tips. Tips. So there's great confusion on the part of a lot of people. They think it's a camp. It is not a camp. It is it's a, it's a genuine... Working cattle ranch. We well, have Texas Longhorns here. We have Navajo churro sheep and buffalo and a and a number of other animals. And, and a horse when each child comes you. here, we assign each child their own horse. Wow! And they are responsible for that horse for the entire time. What a great time! Here. Wait a minute. Is hey. is that horse as well trained as the one Imus was riding? Let me tell you something. It, it, it goes like this. It's like let's set up a ranch. I won't pay for anything. You know how we were just joking about how we take all the money and the interns are paid for, you know, they don't get paid and they do all the work? He gets That's the listeners to buy up all the property around his ranch and, and all the corporate sponsors. Yeah. It's basically a shakedown. Does he live on the ranch? Yeah. yeah. Then they, of course, because right now, now he has no neighbors because he's getting everyone to buy up all the surrounding property. Right. Paul Newman doesn't live at the camp he opened for six years. Right. 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 It's, it's just, a, I see the whole scam perfectly. <laughs> he's got, you know, it's got, you know. Uh, this I applaud, because I wish I'd thought of this. I'll admit, this is his one. I'm just not that crooked. He am a genius. Yeah, he am a genius. I would be guilty doing this, because I know I'd go to hell if I did it. So he then, got sick kids in order to justify it, he puts ten kids. He says, we can only have ten kids, because we don't have any counselors. These kids are really working. So he takes ten sick kids, makes them work. They're dying, and they're working on it, like a horse ranch. I saw the kids. They had them on the Larry King show. The kids look miserable. They look like they're being held captive. And then they've got Mike Lupin <coughs> writing, <coughs> I'm Mrs. So he won't be there to greet the kids. Yeah, right. Did like, it, he cares about kids. He didn't even give a damn about his three daughters. If he cared about kids, he would have had more to do with them. Yeah. I, I interviewed his daughters <laughs> off the air. Jesus. They don't. They sound like a disgruntled group. Put every, them on the ranch so they can see their dad. Right. You know, Howard, every time he's mentioned his daughters, this big, goofy grin comes on my face. Because you know the story I'm, we're thinking I'm of. I'm knowing right. the stories that we can't tell. Yeah, we got, we got a whole bunch of stories about that. Oh.
And I and I don't tell him because I I, you know I protect how, his kids. You know how well he supervised his daughters when they went. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, yeah. He supervises these dead kids better than he does the, the daughters. He tells his assistant to watch the kids, and then when the assistant wasn't home, they just walked the streets. Right. <laughs> how old are his daughters? Oh, they're, they're older women, women at this women point. Now. Really? Yeah. He never talks about them at all. No. He no. doesn't remember them. He never grew up with them. They lived in Cleveland while he was in New York. How often could he have seen them? I wonder if he, has, I mean, he must have zero contact with them because he would yeah. talk about them if he did, don't you think? Yeah, no, I think so. He can't talk about them. He can't talk. What's he going to say? Yeah. Might as well talk about you. He knows you better. <laughs> his daughter's older than his wife. Right. From the first marriage. That's right. He knows his listeners better. He never saw one developmental milestone. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's talking about this other kid that he had with the young wife. Why? Who isn't looking like a young wife anymore. Because oh. I'm a sucker the life because she's probably figured out, why do I have to get dressed good for him? Why? He's like, why, it's so oh, great. Boy. And, and I hold, and they got pictures, and Imus has pictures of him, like, holding the kids. They show him all the time. Yeah. They're showing him on Larry King. You think he and Larry King, like, created pictures? Like, with yeah, yeah, they're kids. Yeah, well, they're such compatriots. That is hideous. Two guys who equal 117 years old. Yeah. Like two, two year olds. Two equal four. If you read Larry King's column today, <laughs> mm. which I don't know why you would, because it's a waste of time, yeah. listening to him plug the places that give him free vacations. Right. But that's what it's all about. I took my family to Las Vegas. Boy, it's great. It was great hanging out with Don Rickles. <laughs> I am, he isn't the best guy in the world. Uh, an hour and 20 minutes of laughs. <laughs> mm. Saw the Blue Man group. Boy, that was great. Cop, cop free I tickets. I still don't know what I saw. But I loved it. <laughs> and listen, he goes, I loved every minute and I still don't know what I saw. <laughs> Were you sleeping through it? Uh. Stupid. And then it's a, the first couple of paragraphs, not entertaining at all. He's thanking the hotel for yeah. giving him this 14,000 square foot suite. Wouldn't you be... See, I'd be embarrassed. I'm an idiot. I pay for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some free vacations, damn it. I paid for my vacation. Man. And when you say when he says I took the family, it wasn't like those older kids who he had right. with the previous one. It's the babies with the new one. Yeah, right. How come it's with the new wives? <laughs> how, man. how come it's illegal for somebody to give me money to play a record, but it's not illegal for him to get a free vacation and don't ask write me. it in his column? I don't and know. Thank him. I don't know the I don't know the rules. I'm sure I'll get busted for doing something that I don't know the rules. You know. I, it was weird. I was reading in the New York Post yesterday that, which, by the way, who hates me? The pay, they, so the ratings came out. Right, I saw. And there was a big headline: "Shocker, shock, jock. Howard Stern loses his ratings." I went, "Oh my god!" I opened the article. I was like, "Oh my god, we lost our ratings. I mean, what happened?" And uh, so what it was is like we usually have like a nine, or we usually have like an eight-two share. Uh huh. So this time we had a seven-two share. We're still number one. Right. And even like, like the Daily News printed accurately. They go, "Oh, so radio, all of the morning shows were down." Yeah, Nobody, we, were like, we were the only ones. Yeah, it was like, you know, all the morning shows were down and the levels were off, but they this regularly happens and then they go back up and it was like, it was no big story, but the post trace, they hate me there. They just hate me. It's it's getting me really riled up. I, I, I'm going to be doing something soon that's major to get back at them. Uh-oh. Listen. I'm just going to be doing something major. Uh-oh. <laughs> big Black. Yeah, and it involves Big Black. I'm going to need your services. You're going to tape everything. I see that WFAN was um, 2.6. Yeah, wow. Gee. Yeah, but we're, we had the most rich listeners. <laughs> I mean, I mean, was on Larry King going, we have 10 million listeners, and uh, and not like Howard Stern's audience, they're a bunch of idiots. But, like, <laughs> yeah, they're 40 million paupers. Yeah. <laughs> His listeners want to listen to a guy who's dying. Right. But isn't it true that your two stations are the two top billing stations in the country? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... Buy my own newspaper and have Big Black as the editor. That's how I'm going to get the news. Uh -oh. But they just write negative crap after yeah. negative crap. And I thought, well, Mitchy, maybe I'm not number one anymore. So I've been number one in this town for like 15 years. So Nobody ever writes be about a that. Big headline if we weren't number one. Right, but, but it wasn't even that. They make up headlines. Yeah, they just like, just want to kill me. But they also have to Why don't they just kill me? You know, but you know what? It gets you to read the article. But can I tell you something? We have this discussion every quarter because I think we've been number one in New York for something like 28 or 29 rating books in a row. Yeah. And you would think it's that would be, that's never been a story. But I, I know I could never. But, but, but then you can see Larry King fawning over Imus, who's number 23 or something. They never mentioned when that. When we first got here, Imus wasn't number one. I know. He really, he's They brought me in because his ratings were gone. Yeah. That is funny. They never talk about the fact that you have this string. Mm. It's great. A string. <laughs> God, I can't even help you, man. You going to make fun of me? Yeah. 
It's funny. <laughs> funny guy. I have also I play more Imus. It's fun. That's the funniest. It's the best. Why Yes. Yeah. Okay, bro. <laughs> Not your bro. <laughs> It works because we treat them like regular kids. We don't treat them. This is good. We don't baby them. They, they can get babied at home. Uh, if they tell me they don't feel like doing chores, I don't they're care whether they feel like doing it or not, they're going to do it. And uh, 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 the first couple of days, some of them say, it, and, you know, they, they say they don't feel like doing it, and they shouldn't get over that. So I think Free worker. I think we give them a sense of accomplishment. Two kids and kids with they, cancer. They restore their self-esteem. They've been told for ever since they've been sick, they've been told by their friends. They've been told by other people that they can't do anything. Oh, yeah. That they're sick. You can clean the crap out of the barn. Well, you know what we found? We found there's nothing wrong with him. <gasps> he did a medical. I guess his wife did a medical test on him. They're cured. And there's nothing wrong with them. Dude, they're dying. And you know what, she? What fun. They finally. And it seemed like there was a bunch of black kids there, like the inner city right, type. Right, And these kids looked like they were just miserable standing next to this old white man who's making them do chores. And they only got a well, few more months to live. They come in and they say they don't feel like doing it. He says, I don't care. Do yeah. it yeah. anyway. Why don't they make that old coot do it? Oh. What do they, the kid goes up and says, I miss my white blood, blood cell count. Goes, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. My wife, my wife Deidre, saved my life. Let her go give you an exam. <laughs> She's better than MD. Well, you know, I hope those kids start dropping off like flies at that camp and they hold I miss responsible right. and lock them in jail. The thing he was always good yeah. at was browbeating people. So now he's browbeating sick kids. Yeah, sick kids. It's, <laughs> what, a, what a treat. You get to clean the barn and do chores for the oh. summer. All the kids with brain cancer were cutting down cactus today. <laughs> I'm <just> hemorrhaging. <laughs> but it's such a scam and nobody's saying anything. Bring me my horse. It's a goof. I'm listening to this and I'm going, what What fun is this? And he's getting free labor out of these kids. I'm sorry. And free. And, and, and what it is is he bought a little ranch and he's getting all the land around it under the guise that it's a camp. Yeah. But then how come it only services 10 kids? With and how all come that it, land. Yeah, all that land and all that money that was raised. I'll tell you why. Yeah, only ten kids. He's like thousands of acres. Yeah. Oh, now you put some of them cowboy hats on your shaved little heads and let's go plow the fields, baby. Hey, you with leukemia, go brand that cow. <laughs> yeah, get busy. Who cares if I kick you in the head? Hold it's, it it's like a depressing looking place. It's it's Can all you imagine you're dying tacky. and they take you to Imus's ranch. And and Imus is on tubes and Ugh. it's just the whole thing is a big you joke. You, you, you think you died and went to hell? Goddamn freak. Yeah, they're preparing you for what death is like <laughs> yeah. for the ranch. Stop picking your scabs and get to work, you little bastard. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're saying. Death will be a blessing. <laughs> yeah, you'll be happy to be dead once he gets done with you. If I did that, they, they would be up in arms. Number one, raising money off the sponsors. Miserable human being on mm. earth. Yeah. And they send you to him. Yeah. Fun guy. And everything has a sponsor name on it. Every part yeah. of the ranch. Oh, oh yeah, but first he's got logos and. Yeah, because he's got this big spread of land now. No neighbors because the, the sponsors are being shook down and by uh, the whole thing's. Go ahead, play some more tape. It's a racket. <laughs> Check this out. This is real funny. Yeah. We had kids, uh, two two boys, one one fifteen years old and one sixteen, and they sat out on the front porch of this the night before they had the lady. They sat out on the front porch of this dance hall and sobbed. Now I don't mean they were sad, but that they had little tears. Sobbed that they had to leave this ranch. And, and and one of them tried to uh, tried to get us to call his parents to see if Dad and I would adopt him. So so that's the kind of it, so it so it has yeah. that. that that's what the fact, I think. He doesn't have tape of that. See, yeah. then you push it a Y too far. <laughs> yeah. You know, the kids want us to adopt him. In fact, my, I, I recently heard from my three older daughters from my first marriage, and they want to be adopted, too. <laughs> they got to get sick first. Yeah, but I want him to get cancer. Then I'll pay attention father. to him. He's such a great father. He's so great that all the kids want to be living with him. Uncle I. <laughs> they cry and call their Grandpappy. <laughs> a 16-year-old kid's going to say, please, I don't want my own parents. <laughs> no, no. No, you have, have to cancer. see these kids. These kids look like, you know. You know, you don't know where they're going back to. They, they, you know, their parents were just at Sesame Place. <laughs> Put the six kids to work. Didn't they do that in Auschwitz? <laughs> <laughs> Camp Auschwitz. <laughs> Circle R Auschwitz. Yeah, hi, kids, go do your work. Go do your chores. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> hey, Al Rosenberg, he says she has more stories. Uh, Al, you saw Al, you sure you want to go public? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we can, NBC. You know what? Al's been screwed by Imus. I haven't noticed for a fact. Not once, <coughs> not twice, but three times I think he's been hired and fired. Uh. The worst thing ever happened to Al with Imus was that uh, Imus got some young, chippy girlfriend who wanted to do voices on the show. <laughs> and she was she was just not really good at voices. So Imus fired Al to pay her. Yeah. yeah. Just took away his living. One of the things that hooked you and I up. Yeah. And yeah. then I felt bad for Al and I put him on our show. Right. Hey, thank you very much. 
I, I, I can't believe it took anybody this long to figure out what the scam is at the ranch. Right. He and his brother and his wife have figured out a way to live tax-free. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> <clears throat> what a piece of work. All right. Yeah. Is that what you wanted to add? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, what, what's great about him is he looks back over the years. He's going to go into you, detail. You well, I, I just believe you. You don't want to get yourself in trouble here. No, no, but, but what he says now is it's their problem. Oh, the kids? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. When he talks about his daughters. Yeah, let them work it out. It's yeah, problem. It's their problem if they their don't problem. like me. How did three people get a problem, but it's only him? Yeah. You're only against him. He has four daughters, doesn't he? Oh. Oh, it does? I think so, yeah. Well, it's hard to keep track. <laughs> you know, I, I, we, we probably know better than he does. We, ju we like to forget about them and just keep the little boy. I uh, don't remember yeah. the number. Yeah. You know why those kids were crying at the camp? Why? Because he plucked their gold teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to pay for the other kids. Hey, huh? still, yeah. Uh, oh, right. we got to pay for this crap. Thank you, Al. You're welcome. What, what do pals do nowadays? Huh? What, what do you do nowadays? Looking for stuff. Actually, Al uh, is um, busy uh, calling our show. That's right. All right, thank you. Just like a thank you. Al Rosenberg, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Big Black. Big yeah. Black, more importantly, what do you do all day? Well, I, know, I don't do anything, but I was wondering about Al, because he's like a talented guy. Though. Well, you do more than uh, Al. <laughs> You're on the show more than Al is. Yeah, don't sell yourself short. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Howard. Yeah. You're about the New York Post and bad articles. Uh, are you going to have any comment about that gag order uh, article they had? Yes, I will. I will actually talk about that. Yeah. And... It's a ridiculous story. <laughs> There's so many stories about me. They just want to badmouth me all the time. Do you have any more tape? That's it, bro. Okay, thank you. Yo. Send us that IMS tape. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe so, you behind me as like a writer or something. I just show them that. What? Well, write something. Maybe we will. All you do is tape stuff off TV. I'm not saying that's bad. You're not a writer. You're a taper. Hmm. All right, man. But, you know, one of these days. <laughs> all right. Thanks for the talk right. bro. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Howard, I was just uh, scanning, and Imus was talking about the new book being out, and he made a comment this morning how his ratings and Stern's ratings were down. He said it's everybody's ratings were down, but I'm number He's one. He wants himself to, to you. He wants to. He wants to be me. The, the, the difference between if I lost, if I lost ninety percent of my audience, I'd still have higher ratings. You're number one. What number is he? Yeah, I'm number one. What number is he? Is right. No, I understand it. He was I, 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 who cares what he's saying? Nobody so does. Stupid. So you, silly. There's so much mileage between you and Iman. Yeah, I mean, he wants to compare himself like it's me and him in some sort of race. There's no race. It's, it's over. It's so No, distant. it's almost like he, you're, he's a colleague. He's number one, too. Yeah. And both of your ratings yeah, are down. We're both in big trouble. Look, you're in trouble, douchebag. Uh, Quit already. Stupid. <laughs> Chris, go ahead. You're on the air. Like, uh, Howard. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Since when is the 4th of July such a major Jewish holiday that you got to take two weeks off? <laughs> <laughs> well, we try to schedule some vacation throughout the year. We always take the 4th of July off. We always take that. Yeah, but, you know, you, you should really take some time to look in the mirror because you're still a disc jockey. You're not what? a high and mighty actor. What, is this, what is this about? <laughs> what is this about? Because I hate hearing all the rerun shows. I listen to your show every but day. But, dude, we got to get vacation, too. I mean... We always take two weeks right around the same time since time immemorial. You take two you know, weeks. People get Not mad. new. People get mad at us for taking vacation. They really do. Dude, I mean, I like being here, but I don't like it it's so much I that I want to... I'm acting as if this is a new thing. We've always done this. I want to have some sort of life. And what does Howard taking two weeks of vacation have to do with him being just a disc jockey? I don't listen. understand the correlation. I mean, you, you got to be here you got to be here five, five days a week for us, man. I work seven days a week. Okay. Uh, you guys are my saviors. Who you got to be here for to? me. I don't want to hear reruns. Who you what's, go to? what's your favorite TV show? The show that you can't live without. I don't watch much TV. But I work Even the days. Sopranos, they do six shows. Everybody's so thrilled. I'm doing 900 shows a day. The best show in the world is 22 weeks But he's getting so pissed, he acts like he's going to leave. Where are you going to go? Listen, By the way, every, I was, every, I was every, in California. Every time he goes on vacation, every year, like there's more vacations and more vacations no, and more vacations. Nah, that's, everybody always accuses me he's of that. getting to like your that. head, Howard. Get you out are of a disc jockey. I know I'm a disc jockey. And I'm don't go off in Hollywood and start making movies as a producer because a, this is your life. He was off in Hollywood, but he wasn't making movies. I wasn't making any movie, dude. I still say, where are you going to go? That's who, it. Who, me? Yeah. yeah. Well, if you guys start playing reruns, eventually I'm going to stop listening. So don't listen. Who but cares? I like you guys. You guys have an obligation to your listeners. <laughs> and you got to provide fresh material every Only day. Only thing I was it. producing No, I, I work seven days a week. I want to hear fresh Howard. All right, all right. Okay, I think we heard his point. That was Les Moonves' theme. Ah! 
<laughs> head of CBS programming. I figured it was. Oh, the funniest changed. picture, uh, Charles Bronson, who, of course, you know, used to be sort of a good-looking guy. And now he's like 150 years old. And he has a wife in her 30s. Of course. And they show her taking him to and from the hospital. That's what she gets to do. That's what Imus' wife gets to do. He gets hip replacements and the young wife goes with him. Well, Imus' wife is like a doctor already. They're going to give her a medical degree. She can diagnose. She can diagnose. I'm sorry, doctor. He is breathing. <laughs> He's Funny. not breathing, doctor. I swear it. Get him and die. See you. So anyway, that's uh, the latest on uh, JFK. A couple of other notes. They say that... Deidre, uh, Deidre, the, Deidre where, was the one who kept me alive. The doctor didn't even know. He saved my life. The doctor didn't even know. Er, uh, it, that I was still, uh, that I wasn't breathing. The uh, De Adra saved sh- sh- my life. Uh, uh, <laughs> she should sit on Imus's face and kill him with those goddamn tubes. The <laughs> Adra uh, uh, sat on my face and gave me life giving air. Pinch that oxygen tube. <laughs> she back to life. She queefed, she queefed right in my. <laughs> queefed my blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> Everything went white, Larry. The Adra told the doctor I was still alive. If it wasn't for her, I don't know where I'd be. She literally saved my life. Literally, the Adra <laughs> gave me life-giving gas. <laughs> <laughs> she creeped right into my oxygen tent. There's always been a controversy, Howard, as to whether... Uh... <laughs>